Lynn Sachs' documentary essay, States of Unbelonging, addresses a tragic death in the midst of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, using many different styles and media formats. Each form, whether overlapping or intercut, evokes its own emotion and serves its own purpose. The news is the least useful medium in Sachs' quest for understanding. She often distorts these clips, suggesting her own alienation and fascination with the material. Did you know that I have never been to Israel? I missed those few moments of peace. One educational documentary feels like a relic from a distant past, perhaps half-imagined. As she is first drawn to the film's subject, Sachs is far from the Middle East. Her home life in New York is presented through abstracting close-ups or long shots where her face is hidden. This conveys a subjective sense of both distraction and absorption. Her name was Revital Ohanian. She's a filmmaker, a mother, a teacher, and she was killed on a kibbutz. The kibbutz Metzer, have you heard of it? Oh yeah, it's so horrible. On the other hand, Sachs' Israeli collaborator Nir Zatz sends her videos of serene vistas from across the sea. At first, these images seem very objective, but what's missing from these frames? The difference between the peacefulness of the images you're sending me and the hostility simmering outside the frame is so apparent to me. Are you trying to protect me, Nir? I protected myself by holding the Super 8 camera in its pistol grip, transforming it into an Uzi machine gun. When Zatz visits the community where Revital Ohanya lived and died, his Super 8 footage seems both more mysterious and more personal, suggesting elusive inner life rather than outer form. We only see Zatz and Sachs' faces as they prepare to shoot on film. As Sachs moves further into Ohanya's world, she introduces us to her fellow filmmaker's work. These fictional narratives offer concrete material from Ohanya's life, but also exhibit an open and ambiguous quality. Movies will not give an answer, but will make you put a question mark in the right places. The casual recordings from the classroom are close to the physical event, but somehow far from its essence. Note the contrast between this raw, unfiltered found footage and images carefully composed for Sachs' film. Finally, she shows us Ohanya herself. The power of Sachs' most conventional strategy builds on this multimedia foundation. After considering the tragedy from many angles and through many different filters, for me this was the moment when the awful reality hit home. Adonais's last triumphant stanzas aloud, wept, realizing how we suffered. 